welcome to welcome to our lesson this afternoon and welcome back from school so today i'll be taking us to our chemistry lesson and this is chamata so, i request someone to pray for us And someone lead us in out of prayer. Yes, come to. Calvin, please run in this one, okay? Okay, humble yourselves. Dear Mighty Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the provision and protection. We thank you for everything. We thank you for this session. We thank you for whatever you've done for us. You've protected our parents, teachers, and everyone. Dear Mighty Father, we are going through this lesson. I call upon your Holy Spirit. I call upon guidance and understanding. So that we understand everything we are going to learn. To Jesus' name we have prayed and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Calvin. Awesome. Okay, so um maybe before I go into what I prepared for us to share this afternoon, can I have a few responses in the chat on the topics we are able to cover this time that just ended? So you can share some of the topics in the chat that you were able to cover. Okay, I can see a few topics. I say it's water, how can I water rocks, periodic table. And uh, okay, thank you for the response. So uh this holiday we'll be looking at our, to our first topic that we're supposed to cover. That we are supposed to cover when we uh in term two. So if anyone's mic is unmuted, the the co host and host, can you please mute them? Because I don't know why I keep getting feedback. Eh? So kindly help me and uh help me mute those people whose mics are open. Okay, thank you. So uh I hope you're able to see me to hear me because uh someone was complaining that my voice is a bit low. I hope it's not interrupted by the place I mean because of the background noise. So I hope we are all able to hear me. So uh this holiday we want to look at carbon in the environment. And uh, hopefully those people that were through with the periodic table, this will be uh your next topic this time as you resume school. So, of course, as we go about a new topic, we expect to have at least three things hinted out of that topic. And the first one, of course, you have to know the competence. Then you have to know the learning outcomes. Then also, you need to know the keywords. What, what words do you expect to find in those different areas of that topic? So uh, on this slide, I'm going to request someone to raise their hand and then they'll read for us the learning outcomes that we expect to interact with in this topic. Yes, Josiah. By learning outcomes, by the end of this chapter, you should be able to understand how 
how and why carbon carbon compound are used as fuel know and appreciate the difference between renewable and non-renewable fuels and understand that non-renewable fuels are not sustainable know and appreciate the the impact of burning carbon based fuels on the environment. Okay, thank you, Calvin. So, uh, sorry, Josiah. Uh, we are going to look at some of those and I'll request uh, Sarah to read for us the answer on the next slide when I get there. So, some of the things we expect you to know as we go about this topic. You need to understand how and why carbon compounds, how and why carbon compounds are fuels. That means you need to know what are fuels and why do we refer to carbon compounds as what? As fuels. Then also know and appreciate the difference between renewable and non-renewable fuels. And then understand that non-renewable fuels are not sustainable. And of course, we'll come up with reasons why. And then of course, to know and appreciate the impact of burning carbon-based fuels on the environment. So may I have someone to read for us the ones on the next slide? And then of course, we'll understand the process of making charcoal. Yes, Amy. Know and appreciate the physical properties and uses of carbon dioxide. Understand how to increase in carbon dioxide in the air. Can, can use the atmosphere and the oceans to get warmer. Understand what greenhouse gases are, <coughs> what they come from, and how they are affecting climate. Understand the origin of hot water in limestone areas and investigate how it can be softened. Understand how the properties and uses of allotropes of carbon of carbon relate to their structures. Okay, very good. Thank you. So those are other that is part of what we are going to be looking at today. So I request DRK to read for us what is on the next slide. We have the keywords and then we also have the competence. So here, okay, you can unmute. Uh, competence, you should be able to invest. I begin from the keywords. Yes, please. Uh, keywords, allotropes, carbon, environment, greenhouse gases, hard water, renewable, and fuels. Competence. Competence. You should be able to investigate the diversity of carbon compounds in the environment. Okay, thank you. That is very good. So uh, we are able to, we are going to investigate the diversity of carbon compounds in the what? In the environment and i know most of us in our environment we've interacted with some of these compounds so on our next slide you're going to tell me what your experience basically is with these carbon related compounds so i have a few examples here so uh may i get some feedback in the chat on how these different pictures are related to carbon based compounds Any ideas? How do you think these substances in the pictures on the slide are related to carbon? 
iPhone, please name your phone with your name. Any ideas on how we think these different substances relate with carbon? Am I able to hear me or I'm speaking to myself? Okay, I'm seeing someone in the chat is responding. The human skeleton, when it's a body, it breathes out carbon, I think. Okay, thank you, Harriet. Uh, okay, Luke's is saying the lamp, when it is turned off, it produces carbon. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, let's hear from uh, Melissa. Okay. Carbon monoxide is a very dangerous gas, whereby when it combines with hemoglobin in the blood, it reduces the ability of, of blood to transport oxygen, leading to death by suff suffocation. That's, that explains the skeleton in the picture. Okay, interesting. Thank you iPhone, please rename your device if you don't know how to request for help. Okay, let's hear from Mary. Okay, let's hear from Alicia. Please, when we call your name, we ask you to unmute. Please unmute and call. Okay? The skeleton is made of carbon atoms that form chains to make an organic compound. Okay, thank you. Sean? I think I think that the hair like the hair was treated using a carbon compound. <laughs> okay, thank you. Percy? I think that to form a human skeleton, the body has to decompose and it produces carbon dioxide during that process. Okay. Thank you. So uh, when you look at all these compounds, all these substances, you notice that carbon dioxide come into play. When you look at this lantern lamp, I know most of us have not seen it, but it was... It is something, or it was something they would use to light up the house sometime back when electricity goes or something. So when you look at this lantern, there is a liquid that is poured into this lantern. Who knows the name of that liquid? So that of course, when they light the wick, it will be able to produce the flame that lights the place. Who knows the liquid they put in that lantern? Okay, so uh, thank you. I'm seeing some answers in the chat. Kerosene, paraffin. Yeah, so you realize that paraffin or kerosene is made up of carbon compounds. So in that case, by the time you light that wick and it has absorbed the paraffin or the kerosene, we expect that at the end of the day when there is a reaction between carbon and oxygen, something is going to be produced. And that something is carbon dioxide. So when carbon dioxide is produced, that means it is a carbon compound because it contains carbon in it. Then when we look at the hair of this young lady, you realize that 
It's made up of some carbon components that cause it to grow the way it does. When we look at the plastics, I know uh, most of us have looked at using materials, actually all of us, if you went through senior one, you must have looked at the topic of using materials and you looked at plastics as one of the synthetic polymers. So when we go into detail as we move further in our chemistry journey, you will discover why we say that plastics are actually carbon related compounds because their structure is made up of carbon as the main element and then of course other elements come into play. When you look at a skeleton, the skeleton is made up of bones and those bones obviously contain carbon in them because you realize when you are studying the, the, the historians, all those that will become archeologists, when, you when you're studying the, 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 the dates of the fossil, fossil substances, maybe those things that decayed a long time ago, you'd use what we call carbon dating by measuring how much time have these things spent when they were dead. So when you look at the carbon count, it gives you that picture that actually our bones contain what? Carbon. So compounds that make up our bones also contain carbon. When you go to different substances, because there are very many. So I want to hear from us, what are some of the substances that contain carbon that we can actually look at? What substances do you interact with in your everyday life that contain carbon, but they are not reflected on this picture? Okay, I can see some answers in the chat. Wood, charcoal, okay, that is good. Sean? Coal. Coal, wood, then I'm seeing soda, candle. Okay, these are all good answers. Paper. Okay, Josiah. Organic matter. Okay, organic matter. Okay, thank you. So those are some of the different substances. You can actually note down some in your book. Uh, by sodium carbonate of soda, soft drinks. Wood, wood, uh, soda by carb, juice. Okay, so most of those components actually have what? Uh, have carbon in them. And that is going to be our center of attention in our topic. So we also have uh, on our next slide, we have a few questions that I want us to share together about. Uh, may I have someone to read for us that question and you as well give us the answer. Yes, Mary. Carbon is a non-metal because carbon is a gas. Okay, very good. Anyone with a different idea? Okay, so carbon is a non-metal because not basically because it's a gas, because the components it forms when it reacts with oxygen are the ones that are gases. So carbon is a non-metal. Okay, we have our next question here. To which group and period of the periodic table does carbon belong? To which group of the periodic table does carbon belong? Yes, Stefan. Stefan, can you unmute and tell us?
Means if you're not able to put up your hand, you can put your answer in the chat. We are on question two, to which group and period of the periodic table does carbon belong? Okay, I'm seeing period group four, period two and group 14. Then uh, group four, period two and group two. Okay, so uh, when we look at carbon, we know that carbon belongs to period two and group four of the periodic table. And please always remember that when we are writing the groups of the periodic table, we always write them using Roman numerals because I'm seeing some people writing them uh, with a number that is usual. So we have group four. So always ensure that it's written in Roman numerals. Then we have it belonging to period two. So period two is written in Hindu Arabic. Then groups are always written in Roman numerals. So please kindly take note of that. Okay, so our next question is, what are some of the properties of carbon? Someone in the chat is asking why are they written like that? That is your homework. Please find out why they are written like that. Students, can we please share what are some of the properties of carbon? When they say properties, what do you think carbon has? Because when you're talking about what are the properties of something, what does it have? What are some of the things you can say and we say, oh, this person is describing carbon. Okay, I'm seeing it has atomic number six, atomic structure, what is that supposed to mean, Mark? Then, uh, then no guy is saying it has a valence of four. Okay. What else? Uh, Very four electrons in the outermost shell. Then it's the secret in the periodic table. It's a nine metal, has a boiling point of that, then thermal conductivity. Okay, so when we are looking at carbon, we know uh, the mass of carbon is 2.2 grams. Okay, so those are some of the properties. What is its density? What is its mass? What is its boiling point? And then is it a non-metal or a metal? So those are some of the properties. And when it burns in oxygen, what we expect to get that can also be a property. Okay, our next. Why in the environment can we find carbon? You can also raise your hand so that we don't just rely on the chat only. Where in the environment do we find carbon? Plants during photosynthesis. Okay, good. Any other? In soft drinks, in air, in dead matter. Okay, those are all good answers. When we have our next question, what are some of the processes that require carbon dioxide? What processes in our daily life require carbon dioxide? Photosynthesis, good.
preservation, respiration of plants, photosynthesis, transpiration in the water cycle. So in packaging substances, that is to say preservation. Okay, so uh, can you get some Madrid for us this statement that is in red ink? Beko, Benko, I don't know whether it's Benko or Beko. Um, carbon is the fourth abundant element in the universe and is a building block of life on Earth. Okay, thank you. So we know that uh, amongst those elements that are abundant, carbon is the fourth among those most abundant elements because of its composition in most of the things. So you find that where life exists in most cases, carbon is also existent in those areas. So for example, in plants, in animals, and of course we know the percentage of carbon dioxide is what in the atmosphere. And because of people that are unmuting, yet their hands are not up, I'll ask the host and co-host that when I mention a name of someone, maybe you can help me ask them to unmute, otherwise I've muted all of us for now. So, I was still asking, what is the percentage of carbon dioxide in the air? Okay, 0.03%. Oh, thank you. So, every one of us should know at least that composition. And of course, there are different things that lead that percentage to increase and shoot up to levels which can not be sustained or levels that are very high and of a negative impact to the, to the environment. But of course, we'll look at that as we move forward. So we move to our next slide. So we have what we call a carbon cycle. What do you understand by a carbon cycle? Or oh, if someone asked you what does a carbon cycle mean, what does it have? What would you be what would be your response in that case? Yes, Sean. I'll tell them that it shows the processes through which carbon is recycled. Okay, thank you. Can you remove the word recycled and you tell us what word you would use there? Because remember, the person wants to understand what cycle means. And if you use the word recycled, they may just get lost to them. I would use the word what? I would tell them this is the process through which carbon circulates in the air. Okay, thank you. That is better. So I'm seeing Alicia. Can someone request her to unmute? This is a process by which Carbon is exchanged among the biosphere, pedosphere, ge geosphere, and also the other, the other parts of the atmosphere. Okay, thank you. 
So I'm seeing some answers in the chart, the carbon cycle is a natural process that describes the movement of carbon through the Earth's atmosphere and it involves continuous. That part is very important. And then carbon is how different organisms use carbon dioxide in the environment. So in the carbon cycle, we basically see the interaction between the different organisms and carbon. So that means if we have plants, we have oceans, we have animals, how are they interacting with carbon? And because it's a cycle, the same way maybe you looked at the cycle of a housefly, you realize that one leads to the other and back. So when this one becomes an adult, the other one will lay eggs and then still goes through the same cycle. So it's the same thing with the carbon cycle. The events are a continuous process. So we don't say it has come to one end. One leads to the other, another leads to the other, then back. So it continues. It's, it's that kind of... There is that kind of continuity within the structure. Okay, some people are asking how is carbon dioxide produced in the atmosphere and then how is carbon reproduced? So as we look at the cycle, maybe some of your questions will be answered. So look keenly at the structure. The words may not be very clear, but I'll try to read the ones that I'm able to. So this is a carbon cycle, and we have the sun here. And of course, we know the sun is an important raw material for what? For photosynthesis to take place. So we have the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is required by the plant for photosynthesis to take place. So, of course, there is decaying of organisms and waste products, which uh, decay for, if they decay for a long time, of course, they will be hosted in the soil or in the rocks to form fossils and fossil fuels. Then, of course, we have root respiration. Then we have auto factory emissions. We all know that factories give up uh, carbon dioxide in case they have those fumes and different things that they manufacture. So, and still, because they are producing that carbon dioxide, it's going back to the environment. And of course, here you can see this sheep, it's representing animal as a generic term in biology. Even human beings, what during their ex exhaling, they give up what? Carbon dioxide. So you realize that it's a continuous process. So if one leads to the other. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere absorbed by plants, then dead materials, then into factories, then into the atmosphere. Then the animal is also giving off carbon dioxide as it breathes out. So you realize that it's a continuous kind of process. So you can take a screenshot or you can even go back and research because most of us that are connected have smartphones or laptops. So we can always go back and research for some of those things on Google, they are there, and you study it in detail. So we have using carbon compounds as fuels. So we know that most of the substances we use at home to produce light and heat contain carbon. Sorry for the spelling here, it's supposed to be contained. So most of those substances that produce light and heat in your homes contain carbon. What are some of those substances at home or the ones you use at home that produce heat or light or even both? Yes, Josiah. I'm seeing some answers in the chat, electric bulb, charcoal, television, bulbs, wood, biogas. Okay, those are all good answers. So those are some of the substances and you find that most of them contain what? Carbon. And I'm seeing coal, firewood, bulbs, stoves. Okay, that is good. Then of course we have examples. 
which we've just given up there. So what is a fuel and what do we know about a fuel? Yes, Melissa. A fuel is, is something burnt to produce heat or light. Okay, that is good. Any other? Okay, I can see. Airy, a substance that gives off heat and light. Good, any other suggestions? Yes, Calvin. Calvin, I can't hear what you're saying. I don't know if it's all of us or just me. A substance when burnt produces and light. Okay, thank you. Let's hear from Alicia. These are materials that are burned to produce a large amount of heat energy or light energy. Okay, thank you. So basically that is a substance when burnt produces light or heat. And of course, those different, uh, the heat and light produced are converted into the different forms of energy that we require for a certain purpose. So we have a fuel is any substance that we burn to provide heat or power. Then of course, we are expected to, because if we are burning these things, and remember we say uh, uh, carbon-based fuels, if we burn them in oxygen, there are specific products that we expect to get. So this is what this next slide is taking us on. When carbon-based fuels are burnt in oxygen, in limited supply of oxygen, what products do we expect to get? Dear, okay. Yes. Okay, I'm seeing someone has posted CO. I don't know what that means. Company, palm, cobalt, coal. I don't know what she was supposed to mean there. Okay, so I can see some answers in the chat. Carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide. Okay, we all know that when carbon burns in limited supply of air, we expect to get carbon monoxide, because someone actually defined it at the beginning when he was explaining about the skeleton. He said carbon reacts with oxygen in limited supply and forms a poisonous gas, which is what? Carbon monoxide. So we have our word equation here. Remember when we are dealing with equations, we have what we call the reactants. So in this case, our reactants are carbon, plus oxygen, and because it's an equation, it should have an arrow. And then what is formed is what we call the what? The product. So in limited supply of air, we have carbon reacting with oxygen to give us carbon monoxide. Okay, so we move to our next. Uh, our next is in excess supply of air. What products do we expect to form when carbon-based fuels burn in? Excess supply of air. What product will we form when carbon reacts with oxygen? in surplus. Okay, I can see Mohoz is saying carbon dioxide. Uh, 
Okay, Samakula. Then uh, someone is asking a question. There are some times when we put double arrows. Uh, double arrows, remember, we when we're discussing permanent and permanent and temporary changes, we say they can act as reversible arrows where you have a product formed, but that product can be reversed to give you the reactant. Or even it is not a complete reaction. So those are some of the terminologies we have. So people who are writing symbols, please, uh, for now, let's stick to writing the words because we are writing the symbols wrongly and in chemistry that communicates something different. So when you say carbon dioxide with C, capital C small O2, that compound does not exist in what? In chemistry. That's why I told people who wrote C and small O, that means something else. It's not carbon monoxide. So let's stick to writing the words as they are, except when you know the correct formula. And since we've not yet looked at formulae, please stick to writing the words as they are. So uh, carbon dioxide. So we have carbon reacting with excess oxygen to give us carbon dioxide gas. So I hope we are all together up to that point. Are we all together up to that point or is there anyone we are leaving behind? Okay, thank you, Mark, for the response. And Isaac, okay, so. We have a big question here, which is telling us. What are renewable fuels? Yes, let's hear from Alex. Renewable fuels are fuels that are used when exhausted. Come again, please. Renewable fuels are fuels that can be reused when exhausted. Okay, thank you. That is good. Let's hear from Sean. Renewable fuels are fuels that do not get over. Or if they get over, they are replaced. Okay, thank you. Benko? Uh, renewable fuels, these are fuels that can be replaced naturally when exhausted. Okay, good. Alicia? Renewable fuels are fuels that can be used again to do other specific works, so as to, so as to, like, okay, that's all. Okay, thank you. So now I'm saying these are fuels that can't get exhausted in the environment. These cannot be exhausted. These are fuels that can be replaced once used up through natural processes. And these are fuels that can be replaced when you, wow, I love uh, all the answers I've received. So the same way you hear renewable, renewable, that means we can obtain back these fuels once we once uh, replenished. Maybe they are done at a particular time. You can naturally obtain them back in a very short time. So, so these are easily formed over relatively shorter period of time. So what are some of the examples of the renewable fuels that we have in our environment? Okay, the chat I'm seeing biogas, 
woodland. Please fuels, not resources. Can we stick to fuels, not resources? Alicia? Okay, let's hear from DRP. Firewood. Firewood, thank you, Josiah. Coal. Coal. Doesn't coal get over when we use it? Sean? Wood. Wood. Okay, it's the same as someone saying firewood. Thank you. Alicia? Okay, it seems Alicia forgot that she's putting up her hand. Annie? Water. Is water a fuel? DRK? No, water isn't a fuel. Okay, so did you want to give us another answer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oil. Oil, okay, thank you. So uh, I have a picture here giving us the different, yes, Melissa? Petroleum. Petroleum. Is petroleum a renewable fuel? I don't think so. Anyway, as we go about, maybe we'll start to discover some of these things. So uh, this picture is representing some of the renewable fuels that we have in our environment. First of all, we have the wind. So of course you can install those wind panels that can always that can always respond to the amount of wind that is available in the environment to generate energy for you. And then of course we have hydropower. So hydropower is also a renewable fuel because you know when you have fast running water, you can basically generate this fuel. And then we have the geothermal energy. And then we have the bioenergy. We also have the solar energy, which is from the sun. So even when it rains, we know that at some time, the sun will come out and of course recharge your solar panels. So this uh, diagram, this side is trying to show you so how some of these different energies are obtained. So for biogas, we can use any of these, the corn, the poultry, animal waste, and all those other things. So those are some of the, of the renewable fuels that we have. We have the wind, we have the hydroelectric power, we have the geothermal energy, we have the bioenergy, and then the solar energy. And of course, you can find out more of those Examples. Yes, Mary. Teacher, here you're saying hydroelectric power. I thought that the renewable fuel is fast flowing water, not the power. So I'm confused there. Okay, thank you for that question. So when you talk about high running water, not every fast running water produces hydroelectric power, because I'm imagining I go to Kampala town and there are floods and of course the water is flowing faster. Will I be able to generate power from such kind of water? So it's better for us to talk about the hydroelectric power because we know at the back of our mind that the electricity is generated as a result of the fast running water in the lakes or rivers and then you're able to creates dams that can be able to supply that power. I don't know if I've answered your question.
Okay, so Sean is saying, yes, you can. I don't know what you're guessing, whether the fast running water in Kampala, of course, those floods will not be sustainable. But of course, when you know you have a river or a lake, you're able to generate that electric power, which makes it a renewable fuel. So I don't know what your yes, you can is about to worry, but maybe you can expound now. All right, so if there are no more questions. So we have advantages of renewable fuels. What are some of the advantages that we have about renewable fuels? Yes, Mary. They can easily be replaced. Okay, when that done. is good. Any other? I need to see more people putting up their hands because we are 70 students here. So I expect that we raise our hands and say something. At least you will also finish the lesson and say I did something productive in the lesson. Okay, let's hear from Benko. Solar energy are cheap to obtain. Okay, it's cheap to obtain. Good. Calvin? Uh, they can be continuously, they can be continuously used. Okay, good. So I'm seeing some amazing answers in the chat. They are abundant, they are reliable, they are cheap, they don't get used easily, used up easily. So all those are great answers. Uh, increases public health, good. They are good at saving energy. They provide people, energy to people, good. They promote saving, all right, so. Thank you all for your contributions. So I have a few here and I request someone who hasn't said anything during this lesson to put up their hand and they read for us these different advantages. If you know you haven't said anything since the lesson started. Yes, Tasha. Um, I read the advantages. Yes, please. Maintenance requirements are low, can be used over and over again, saves the environment by emitting little pollutants, reliable sources of energy due to availability. Okay, thank you. So on top of what you, you've given me, those are some of the few advantages that are this long, but don't limit yourself, write as many as possible as long as they conform to, to the advantages of renewable fuels. So we also have disadvantages. So uh, in most cases we say, even when it's good, as good as it is, it's only God who doesn't have uh, disadvantages. So the rest of the things basically, if it's good, it has some kind of effect that may not be very positive. So uh, Edwin is saying they cost a lot of money. Okay, thank you. And then pollution. Okay, so let me hear from these people whose hands are up. Uh, Victoria. Okay, Victoria forgot that her hand is up. Mariela. They lead to air pollution. Okay, air pollution. Josiah? They are expensive. Expensive. Calvin, thank you. Calvin? 
Okay, maybe he also forgot that his hand is up. Mohozi. Unpredictable whether event that disrupts the continuity of field species. Okay, thank you. So unpredictable weather conditions. So I'm imagining someone who is using a solar if it chooses to rain every day, every day, every single day, may not be able to know what happens. So we have high production costs, they are expensive. Over what are they? So let's be be particular. Then they pollute the environment, setting up biogas system needs much money. Pollute our environment, costs many lives of the air they breathe. Okay. Uh, let's hear from Alicia. They, they require a lot of space. They need recycling. Renewable energy devices need recycling. And the initial cost of renew, re, renewable energy is high. The efficiency of renewable technologies is low. Renewable energy is not available around the clock. Okay, thank you. Those are amazing answers. So for those that were writing, that would be very good for you. So of course I have a few disadvantages. Here you go ahead and look for more yourself. So we have the fact that there is a high need for storage. For example, if you go and buy the solar panels, of course you need the storage equipment. And then when you have um, hydroelectric power that different connecting wires also need uh, where you're going to store the generation of that electricity, like the power stations, the different uh, stations that are put up in different areas. And then of course we have storage, uh, Technologies are expensive, and then of course unpredictable weather events that this. Perhaps the continuity of these resources, and of course we can always find out on what are the disadvantages of renewable fuels. So we have uh, the non-renewable fuels. What are non-renewable fuels? Well, those who haven't said for anything to tell us what they think non-renewable fuels are. Okay, the three hands I'm seeing up are for those that have been saying something all along. May I get someone who hasn't said anything at all since the lesson started? Tell us what they think about. We want to hear for your voices, but if we keep hearing the same people over and over again, which is a good thing, and let's have those people who haven't said baggy. Okay, let's hear from your Vita Baggy. Please get a step on it for your Vita. Please unmute and tell us. Non renewable resources are resources that cannot be. Re cannot be replaced after use. Okay, thank you. Masi Mugume. <laughs> um, renewable resources are substances that once exhausted cannot be reused. Okay, good, but please let's stick to fuels because when you say resources, it's a general term and it may bring in things that are not related to our scope of coverage today. So as we define, let's stick to the word 
skills other than resources. Okay, um, let's hear from Calvin. A non renewable fuel, as have says, that are formed naturally and cannot be retained once exhausted. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Non renewable resources, sorry, non renewable fuels are fuels that cannot be filled up again once used up. Okay, thank you, Melissa. The second, Melissa. These are fuels that cannot be reproduced after use. Okay, thank you, Alicia. This a non renewable fuel is a natural fuel that cannot be readily replaced by natural means at at pace at a pace quick enough to keep up. Okay, thank you, Benko. Uh, non renewable fuels are fuels be replaced naturally when exhausted. Okay, Mohan. Non-renewable fuels are. Sorry, please unmute. Non-renewable fuels are fuels that are formed naturally but cannot be replaced by natural means. Okay, thank you. So all of the amazing answers. Thank you all for your contributions. And even in the chat, I am seeing several of them. So we need to understand that these are produced naturally but cannot be replaced. Or even when replaced, they take several number of years. It can even take millions of years to be what? Replaced. So, uh, of course we've said they are formed naturally and are available in limited amounts and they cannot be easily replaced due to the long time it takes for them to be formed. So we have different uh, non-renewable fuels. Can I have some examples of the different non-renewable fuels that we have in our environment? Yes, Sean? Petroleum. Petroleum, good. Benko? Sorry, please unmute. We majorly have the uh, fossil fuels that include crude oil, coal, petroleum, and others. Okay, Mark, thank you. Mark, please unmute and tell us. Cool. I didn't hear anything. I don't know if it's on my side. Call. Call. Okay, thank you. Jovita. Alicia. Um, call, natural gas, oil, and nuclear energy. Okay, thank you. So those are some of the different uses, uh, the different non-renewable resources that we have. Okay, lastly, DRK. Biogas. Uh, no, we already looked at biogas as a renewable fuel, so it's not among the non-renewable. All right, thank you. So uh, we have uh, different answers in the chat, natural gas, nuclear energy from uranium, fossil fuels. Okay, thank you. So uh, I have a picture here showing some of the non-renewable fuels. First of all, we have oil. We have coal, we have natural gas, and then we have nuclear energy. So of course you can find out other examples of those non-renewable what? Fuels for you to be knowledgeable on those different fossil fuels and how are they obtained. Okay, I've seen someone saying phosphate and then still we have diamond. So we have several non-renewable uh, so when you look at this, 
oil, coal, natural gas, uh, and then nuclear energy. All of them at least contain what? Carbon dioxide, sorry, carbon in them. But when we generalize the term and we say non-renewable non resources, we can bring in the phosphate, we can bring in the steel, we can bring in the diamond, we can bring in the copper, all those different things that don't actually even contain carbon, but because of how they exist as naturally produced, but then take a very long time to be obtained once exhausted. So that is why we stick to basically these that are here. So this diagram here is showing a comparison between renewable fuels and then non-renewable fuels. So under renewable, we said we have solar energy, we have biomass, we have geothermal, we have wind, and then we have hydroelectric power. And then when we come to the non-renewable, we have the oil, we have the coal, we have the nuclear, and then we also have the natural gas. So those are some of the substances that make up non-renewable fuels. So I hope we are not very fast and we are not leaving anyone behind. So um, we move to the next. We have advantages of non-renewable fuels. Can I have some of the advantages that we know? Mariela? Non-renewable non resources can't be replaced when okay. excess. Thank you. Mohozi? Non-renewable sources are very easy to store. Okay, thank you. Okay, someone is saying high profits can be generated from selling oil. That is good. Benko. Non-renewable resources are environment friendly since they do not pollute the environment. Okay, I wish you about that, Alicia. Non-renewable fuels like coal can be used in generating. It can be generated and then get huge profits through selling them. Okay, thank you. And maybe. Non-renewable fuels are easy to transport since they are often liquids or gas. Okay, thank you. That is good. So we have all those different advantages. So I have a few here. If I know it's build on them. So I'm going to get someone who hasn't said anything at all to read for us these advantages. Please, if you haven't said anything, those who have been saying, giving us answers, please lower your hands so that you can have those who haven't said anything to raise their hands so that you can get one to read for us. Yes, Bethany. Advantages of non-renewable sources. Cheap in converting from one type of energy to another. Easy to use whether in the house or elsewhere. Very cost effective, therefore it is cheap. Very easy to store. Creates jobs to many people in extracting, transporting and refining. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, next, we are going to look at the disadvantages. 
What are some of the disadvantages of the non-renewable fuels? Okay, let's hear from Jemima or Jemima. Very expensive in refining. Okay. Jemima, please get a set place for our ears. Pasha? Um. Disadvantage, what a disadvantage of non-renewable sources is that they are expensive to obtain. Okay, thank you. Mohozi? Non-renewable sources, e.g. sulfur dioxide, when it's burnt, it causes health problems. Okay, good. Mark? Like they are limited in number, so they can eventually run off. Okay, thank you. Dear, okay. And they take a long time to form. Okay, thank you. Benko? They require high technologies in when finding where they are and also in refining. Okay, that is very good. Thank you. Alisa? The, the mining of coal, coal, searching for oil, installing oil drills, building oil rigs, inserting pipes to extract and transporting natural gases are very time consuming processes. So the disadvantage of Non renewable fuels is the, is that they are time consuming. Okay, good. Thank you. Karen. They are they are not reliable. Okay, thank you. In the morning. Stefan. Stefan? Okay, it seems some people put up their hands and say this so Okay, so we have in the chat affordability in most cases, non renewable fuels are relatively expensive. Okay, so. Thank you all for your responses. Stefan, we can't hear you. We are just hearing about what I don't know. So we have uh, burning fossil fuels, release greenhouse gases, causing global warming. So uh, let's have someone again who hasn't said anything read for us my few disadvantages that I came up with. And of course, you can build on them with whatever is missing. But from the other hand, I'm seeing up for those ones who have been saying something. Okay, let's hear from Tina. Tina Martinez. Tina, we can't hear anything. What about, can you hear me?
Okay, let me hear from Annie because I'm not hearing you. Tina? Okay, let's hear from Francis. They take millions of years to form. They can never be replaced once used up. They release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere when burnt. They release sulfur oxide when burnt, when burnt, causing breathing problems. The time consuming, for example, mining, inserting into pipes and transporting. Okay, thank you, Francis. So those are some of the disadvantages of what? Of non-renewable fuels. So we have a comparison here between renewable and non-renewable fuels. So I can see some people have posted the answers, emit poisonous gases when burnt, Okay, extraction of non renewable fuels can lead to water pollution. Okay, so uh, let's have someone read for us this scenario. Okay, let me see who was the first to put up their hand. Yes, our host, Isa. Muse Chibuka has a large animal farm and has been wondering what he can do with all the manure he collects without wasting it. He asked the son to buy for him natural gas, yet the son has not received payment for the past month. They are both puzzled on what to do. How can you assist Ms. Chiwuka and his son to solve this problem? Okay, so any ideas? Can we brainstorm on what we think this question wants us to? Considering what we've just looked at up there, who can tell us what do you think this question is asking us to do? S23 Ultra, is that your name or the device name? Okay, send Noga. Yes, they want the, the fuel from manure. Okay, fuel from manure. Which fuel is that? Biogas. Okay, very good. Then I'm seeing Annabelle is saying use of biogas instead of natural gas. That is good. Then uh, Mariela, I think Jose Chibuka should use manure to produce biogas energy. Okay, these are brilliant answers. I love how fast we are thinking. Let's keep that up. Any other suggestions? Okay, biomass. So uh, I'm going to give us a hint here. And of course, I will need our responses. I don't know how you're going to deliver them. But if you have your responses, you can inbox Mr. Kaziva to send you where you can actually post your answers. Because I would want to see a write-out on how you would answer this kind of question if maybe it was posed to you in the exam. Because when we mention, I may not be able to get the full view of what you are actually communicating. But of course, I have a hint here which is showing us that biogas from manure, first of all, you're going to tell us how he's going to produce that biogas. So don't just say manure and then you finish. So how is he going to produce? Of course, you can take a screenshot so that you're able to work even when we are done here. So we have biogas from manure. How is it generated from the manure? And then our next hint is what are the advantages of renewable fuels? Because in this case, we've said 
Biogas is the renewable fuel and the natural gas is the non-renewable fuel. How can you compare those two? To show Mr. Chiwuk and his son that actually biogas is far better than what? Than natural gas. Then we also have the dangers of non-renewable fuels. How are you going to convince this mosaic that his suggestion of natural gas is actually not something to look at yet. He has a lot of manure on his farm that he actually doesn't know what to do with. So are we still together up to that point? I'm going to give us just one minute to take a screenshot. Okay, thank you for the responses, Mark and Karen. So uh, our lesson is going to end, to end here today. And next week, of course, we'll be able to cover up to 4 p.m. So you should come prepared. So in that case, unless we have any questions, I would request someone to pray for us as we close up today's lesson. Please, if you're willing to pray for us, raise your hand. As I was saying, it's too early. Please go and make research work. And people should stretch for their legs and all that. Okay, let's see how from the Vita. Come by yourself for the word of prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Loving Father, we thank you for the gift of life, for the gift of this day, and for the, for enabling us to have this lesson. We ask you that you can protect us and guide us in the next lesson. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jovita. Thank you so much, everyone, for connecting <laughs> for the lesson. So next week, we'll connect for our full hours. I apologize. I have to leave those 30 minutes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely week. God bless you. So, hello, good afternoon. Are you fine? Okay, for those on the WhatsApp group, you can always find my number there, except for those who are not there. Okay, madam. So uh, my number is that, but please make sure it's education or whenever you're texting and within the study times, because eh? some people can text you at times that are not study times. So make sure you're within that range. Yes, ma'am. Bye, teacher. Okay, bye. Yeah, thank you for the lesson. Thank you. Welcome, thank you. Too. Welcome, thank you. Too. Welcome, thank you too. God bless you, teacher. God bless you too. Thank you. Vita, how are you? Thank you.